Hello and welcome to the British Dapper and today we're talking about men's fragrances. So today it's a little bit of a departure from what I normally talk about but it's all interlinked, all interwoven with wearing men's clothes and wearing them to the best effect. So it's only natural that we should also smell as well as look the part. And so today is focused on fragrances. And it's not a review of individual fragrances, it's just my thoughts on how you can acquire them and at reasonable prices. And some common sense mistakes that I've made over the years as well, which when you look back on, think why did I do that? So um, today we're talking about I've got a small selection in front of me now just to demonstrate a range. Now when I was in my 20s I had about 40 or 50 different fragrances and they were really you know Galliano, there were all sorts of different ones, there was uh, Eau Sauvage, there was uh, Givenchy, there, there were, I had just about anything you could think of, Dunhill, and, uh, and I had such a large selection that it took me years to get through them, and during that course the fragrances changed in strength, because, you know, they were in the bottle uh, for so long, and uh, they evaporated a little bit, so making them a bit stronger, and some washed out. So I pared it down over the years to literally um, a couple of handfuls. <laughs> so in this range in front of me here, I've got some darker, heavier ones, all the way to ones that I'd wear in the summer months. And uh, not, we're not talking about the notes and what they smell like, like, oh, 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 essence of house brick. And yes, I can smell tarmac. It's not like that, okay? Um, all we're talking about is fragrances come in strengths, different strengths. When you go to buy them, um, that's another thing. I mean, some of these, £120 a bottle all the way down to £10 a bottle. Um, now obviously if you've never tried one, to buy one for £120 only to find out you don't like it or other people don't like it, that's quite a lot of money to lose. So when we're talking about buying a fragrance, I always try and do it in the most cost effective way if I'm trying to find a new fragrance. So there are a number of ways we can do that. We can go online and buy off, uh, for example, eBay, Vinted. Uh, there are a whole host of uh, platforms that sell secondhand fragrances as well as other products. Um, so I'm not advocating one over another. But what I would say is a little bit of a word of caution Sometimes second-hand fragrances are, let's say, um, quite old by the time you buy them. They're half used, they could have been in that bottle for two or three years. Um, and so their essence, the, the way they smell, might change over that time. And more importantly, their longevity, how long they last on the skin, would also uh, change as well. So with that in mind, um, it would still be a good way of doing it to find out if you like that particular fragrance or you, you, you do or you, before you go and buy the full £120 version. Uh, another way of doing that is to go into stores. Um, many stores will give you a try, try before you buy. Um, generally they'll put them on a strip of card. Now I'd be cautious of that because the piece of card is neutral. 
It doesn't give you any idea. It's just a true fragrance on a blank canvas. Now, anybody with a bit of understanding of this knows that your skin, um, everybody is different. So your skin and the chemicals within your skin, the interaction between the fragrance and your skin can give different people a different response. Uh, a different smell it does alter so what smells really nice on one person might actually not smell very nice on another person and that's fine uh, but it's a very expensive way to find out that if you've just spent 120 pounds up to 500 pounds on a bottle of um, of fragrance only to find out that it doesn't suit you so Try before you buy, but see if you can put it on the back of your hand or, or you know, so it's actually going to get some chemical reaction with your skin. Okay. Now, initially, you're going to get that quite a heavy smell because it's just been sprayed on. You need to let that air for a minute or so and then try it again. And then you get a much better uh, view of how it smells. I would only advocate you try one fragrance at a time. So you put one on and make a mental note of when you put it on so you can time the longevity of it. And then as you go through the day, every now and again, have a smell, see how it changes because it will, it will change over time. It will mellow down. So over time, see how it changes, if you still like it, see if anybody makes comments about it and uh, and also you measure the longevity of it i would say typically with a fragrance it's about projection of that fragrance as well so i made a fatal mistake with dunhill okay i used to have this many many years ago and i thought i'll try it again it was nice then well to be fair, it's a lovely fragrance, but it's very dated now. And it's still a very strong fragrance, and I forgot that. And when I first put it on, it was so heavy um, that I could smell it for, <laughs> for the whole day. The longevity was great, but that was because I'd oversprayed it. And that was very heavy. I could smell it all the time. Um, it was like, <laughs> like living in a perfume factory. So I'd avoid, now I remember, oh, it's just one small spray and then rub it on both sides rather than giving it a couple of sprays either side. So it's just something to bear in mind. Now these are more what I would consider winter fragrances because they're quite woody and they're quite spicy. They're quite heavy in fragrance. And then I've got other ones that are sort of a little bit lighter they're um, they go well in the evenings because they're still quite heavy um, and then I've got lighter ones for the daytime and some other ones that I wear that are a little bit sweeter a bit lighter and then I've got some summer fragrances that are very light and fresh so for example we've got Ferrer's 89 here very floral and blue Chanel uh, is more of a sea spray sort of smell, a very light and fresh citrusy sort of smell. This one, believe it or not, Lewis Cardin's Sacred, has a chocolate flavour to it or smell to it. Uh, very, very popular. Ladies, ladies like the smell of that. Um, other ones are sagey and uh, very nice in the daytime, non offensive ones in the daytime um, so for example if I'm going into work I wear aftershave I want you know I don't want to offend people and I want to keep it um, light and fresh in the evenings then the slightly darker heavier ones come out and obviously in the winter we're talking about heavier fragrances anyway so when it comes to buying these fragrances We've talked about how you can cheaply buy them online, second hand, 
Um, you could also buy samples second hand or um, samples that have been sold on eBay or on other systems like Vinted etc. Um, another way is also to try before you buy um, in store and measure that and obviously you can do that over a period of time over several fragrances so it's just personal taste when it comes to a smell um, what somebody might like I might dislike and it's very much the same with uh, people in your vicinity as well so you might wear something you love but it's quite repulsive to other people uh, mainly because you might be over spraying it or because of the smells that are involved. What I want to do though is to introduce you to another way and that is um, to go to stores that you wouldn't ordinarily consider. Um, a lot of um, fragrances are not actually sold in stores, they're quite niche ones. For example, Flores is a good one and Creed are another one. Uh, they're quite, they're very popular, they're quite expensive. Um, so, uh, for example, if you're talking about Aventus uh, from Creed, you're talking about, well, around about £280 for about 70 or 80 millilitres. It's quite expensive, you know, I mean, you're talking £500 for 100 millilitres, something like that, I don't know. Um, same with Flores. Flores is a little bit cheaper in its prices, they're, but they're still £100, £150 uh, sort of price range. And uh, But I personally like them. I historically have bought Flores um, Creed, not so much. I bought one about 15 years ago, um, quite an old uh, fragrance, but it was still very nice. Um, so talking about these sort of organisations, they've been going since 1730 for Ferrez, uh, 1760 for Creed, so they are well established uh, um, places to uh, make uh, fragrances. So what I did was I went onto, the, onto their online account and I bought some samples. So this is what I found. So first of all, uh, I tried Flores. And uh, I found online you could get some samples. They're 10 milliliter samples. And uh, I got two. Uh, one I was gonna use anyway, which I know I've used before. and. Another one I thought I'd try because I've never tried it before and uh, we'll see how it goes. So anyway, Flores sends it in a lovely box and it's sealed and if we go inside you can see the samples. So when it comes to the samples, this is Flores uh, 127, um, famous because it was Winston Churchill's um, fragrance of choice. Now, you may or may not be able to see that, but it's quite a substantial amount of uh, fragrance. And, uh, and I think this cost about £22 for 10 millilitres. So it's not a bad way of doing it. I mean, if I didn't like it, I've only lost £22 rather than £150 or £140. So I like this anyway. So it's, it's worth buying it because um, it will get used. The other one I tried was this, which is called Leather Oud. Um, now this is a darker one. I knew it was going to be a heavier one. And uh, I thought I'd try it. Um, so again, 10 millilitres, quite a large amount, cost about 17, 18 pounds. So I thought, if it doesn't, if 
but it's not very nice. I have only lost 18 pounds um, rather than 145, something like that. Unfortunately, with this one, um, I liked it to start with, um, but uh, my partner didn't. And uh, so, in a way, I lost out on this one. It, it's one that I wouldn't try again. I tried it a second time, thinking, oh, maybe put it on too heavily. But it's just the, the notes that come through from it are quite strong. Um, and a little bit too strong for me personally. So it didn't quite work out for me on that one. But I still stand by it. It's still a very effective way of trying out a new fragrance and only and gambling in a way but only gambling with small amounts of money rather than somebody recommending it and you going out and buying it for 120 or 140 pounds only to find out you don't like it another one is creed now creed is uh, a very well established com company and um, I think you can see that there they um, provide what they call a universal sample set now in here I originally bought this because it has women's fragrances as well and I wanted to buy something for my my, uh, my partner and I wanted her to try them to see what one she preferred before we went and bought the full one now these are 1.7 milliliter so they're a little bit smaller you still get a few wears out of them and again the same principle you know spray them see how long they last see how other people react to them now in here there are and um, because it's a universal one um, not realizing this has three men's samples and two women's samples but they do another one as well for women's. Uh, so in here there is Aventus, Aventus Cologne, and uh, I believe the other one is um, Irish Tweed. Um, so this worked out at about um, Creed is a little bit more expensive. Uh, I would say this. I think it was about forty odd pounds, and you got five fragrances there to try um, and I would say this is the better way to do it because if I was to get Creed Aventus as an example it's you know 250 pounds something like that upwards and it's the same with the, the the women's version of that it's even more it goes up into the thousands but then we are talking for a, a litre bottle of the stuff so um, but very very cost effective way of doing it you get five different fragrances to try and I think it's about four or five pounds each so if you can afford it it's not a bad way of doing it and of course you still have those to use for any special occasion uh, if you just want a small amount to try so um, well worth it and um, I think that's pretty much it for today. Perfumes, as I said, a very subjective subject. That's why I'm not going to go through what my personal favourites are. Although I do tend to lean towards the Flores fragrances. I love them because they're light and fresh, um, slightly floral. But then I like the spicier ones as well. So I think. Uh, if anybody's starting out to buy their own um, length, uh, amount of fragrances, start off with one that you feel is going to be an everyday wearer, something that would, you know, would you could wear in the summer, in the winter, day or night, wouldn't be offensive to other people, but would get positive feedback from other people. So. There are a number of ways you can do that to get those samples and try them. Um, the other thing is also maybe you might have um, 
somebody that might want to do an exchange. So for example, you might have fragrances already that you've tried and uh, somebody might get a new one and you might exchange, you know, let them wear yours and you wear theirs. It's a novel way of doing it. Um, for example, it might be a, your son or, uh, or uh, your father or your uncle and uh, someone like that. Uh, so it's worth a, a thought. So hope you all stay smelling fresh and looking good. So until next time, take care.